Diamond City was meant to answer all my questions. My journey has not ended, it's only just begun. We had to find the subway. You're looking for a man. He can help you. But he ain't gonna be the man you expect. He's somewhere deep and dark. Surrounded by folks with nothing but cruel intentions. But there's an echo. Something in the past that can help you. When you meet the fat man and the angry woman, tell them to remember the quarry and Lily June on the rocks, and they'll let you and your friend pass. And this should be where we would find Nick. But all we found was gangsters who wanted to shoot first and ask questions never. I was forced back up the stairs, but I was still able to rain fiery hell from above. The flames seemed to have taken care of the first gang members we came across. But we were still not alone. A single trigger man tried to find us. But he failed. We scouted out and looted all the rooms surrounding the entrance to the subway. But we lost track of time and forgot the inevitable change from man to zombie. We had to take care of them before we could head on. Piper was getting good at pointing out the obvious. And they were once again all down. And we were safe, at least for the time being. A makeshift bomb alerted us to more trouble up ahead. I would be able to sneak past the bomb, but now with Piper with me, it just was not worth the risk. So I defused it and we headed on deeper into the subway. The station was crawling with a lot more of these trigger men, and I mean a lot more. But fire once again would even the odds. first of them was down, but all that meant was the rest were ready for us. Time for some more fire. The fire helped to stop their advance, giving us vital seconds to work out a plan. Piper headed down to see how many there was. I already knew it was a lot more than we had hoped for, but the fire had helped decrease their numbers. But I was getting low on Molotovs. My superior accuracy was once again paying off. All I would need is a clear shot and I could down every single one of them. But the fools dropped their guard and turned their backs on me. They deserve to get shot in the back. I could not stop Piper heading down. I wish I could, but she was headstrong and wanted to take on the world. God, she reminded me of Nora. The two of us worked in tandem, slowly working our way through their vast numbers. As I was using the stairs for cover, they just kept leaving theirs and just walking straight towards me. What did they expect? The new world had forgotten all the tactics from the old world. One of them tried to flank us, appearing from behind a pillar, but I was able to spot him before he opened fire. Piper was down hurt and I had to get to her fast. Why did she have to push so far forward? And then at that moment the dead started to get up and walk. 
For a second I thought of shooting them, but they would prove more useful as they started to stumble towards our common enemy, giving me the chance to get to Piper and heal her. Once she was up, I headed back for cover and was able to pick off the last of the zombies as I stumbled around in the dark. There was one more trigger man left, but also one more zombie. As he opened fire on the zombie, I moved round to get a better shot at him. I did not hesitate as I shot him in the back. another zombie dealt with. But then I saw one out of the corner of my eye heading straight towards Piper. I shot it in the head just seconds before it reached her. Piper had come close to being bitten in the last fight. The thoughts of losing someone else and someone so young filled my head as we headed further down the tunnels. I would not be responsible for her death. It was because of me she was down here. I could have told her to stay home. Maybe I should have told her. If I knew it would be this dangerous, I would have. Snap out of it, Sean. Complete the mission. Out of Molotovs. Don't worry, I have the next best thing. They had no idea where the attack was coming from, as I blew them up from afar. They soon spotted us though, and opened fire. But there was only a couple of them left and they were no match for me and Piper. My accuracy temporarily failed me, but not for long. Once again they lost sight of us, and once again I made them pay. We moved closer to what appeared to be a vault entrance. A couple of zombies were between us and the vault. What's this? They were both put down relatively easy. There was now nothing stopping me from entering my first vault since 111. The door was easy to open as long as you had the correct key, and mine was on my wrist all this time. I did not know what I was going to find in there. Was this the same as my vault? Vault 111? Would this be full of cryo chambers too? Apparently all vaults were different. Let's see what was inside this one. A different number but a same feeling. It seemed only days since I last done this. For me it was, but in reality it was hundreds of years. I got a question. Why the hell would anyone build a vault out of a sub As we moved down the stairs, we heard more of Slim's trigger men. I bet they wish they were talking about something else. Get a bunch of union boys to work some construction job that would go nowhere. Keep everyone on payroll. As these would be their last words. One more grenade. Oh, well, fight. Other One was dead and the other was crippled and would be an easy kill as he cowered behind the boxes. Their last words would not be memorable ones. One of them though was carrying an old 44 pistol. This thing was an antique, but powerful. And I had ammo for it. This would stop most people with one shot. As long as they got close enough, that is.
The door opened into a large chamber. This was nothing like Vault 111. This vault had not even been finished. It was just a shell they had cut out from the dirt. A fitting hideout for scum like these trigger men. I spotted one some distance away. Then a closer one spotted us. I would need to deal with him fast. The shot echoed all around the chamber, but no one seemed to have noticed the sound. That would give us the chance to head deeper into the chamber, undetected, at least for now. Looks like we're old excavators going Piper die. made a mistake, her voice echoing throughout the chamber. But she did make up for it. But then again, they did seem to all notice them gunshots. More of them came running towards us. One of them with no more than a stick. God knows what he thought his chances were. Another came and fell. His death gave me a new sense of purpose and a sense of determination deep inside me. We tried to make it past the fresh corpses before they started to turn. We did not make it too far before they did. And once again we were surrounded by the dead. One got a hit in, but it did not break my skin. I was bloody lucky. I didn't want to ride my luck anymore. I tried to take one of them out from distance. But what a fool, I forgot the one right in front of me. He turned as my focus was drawn towards him. And at the very last second, I dropped him. We needed to be more careful. Hell, I knew better than this. As we moved deeper into the unfinished vault, we were finding areas in different stages of completion. and we were heading into what appeared to be a common area. A single man stood in front of us, but for the time being he was unaware of our presence. I could have taken him out, but something told me to wait. How you doing in there, Valentine? Feeling hungry? Valentine, I'd found him. Keep talking, meathead. It'll give Skinny Malone more time to think about how he's gonna bump you off. Don't give me that crap, Valentine. You know nothing, you got nothing. Really? I saw him writing your name down in that black book of his. Lousy, cheating card shark, I think were his exact words. Then he struck the name across three times. Three strikes? In the black book? But I never... Oh, no. I, I, I gotta smooth this over fast. And the language these people use. Meathead, what was that supposed to mean? The man ran past us and did not even notice us in the shadows. Whatever Valentine said spooked him. Hey you! I don't know who you are, but we got three minutes before they realize muscles for brains ain't coming back. Get this door open! A trench coat. That was our guy standing in the shadows. Three minutes Guys. to get this door open and to get the hell out of here. My computer hacking skills had increased dramatically and getting the door open was not a problem. I'd found him. I'd found my man Valentine, but not a man. Ah, my knight in shining armor. Question is, why does he come all this way? Risk life and limb. An old private eye. I need you to find someone, but it's complicated. I don't exactly know where they could be or how long they've been gone. Well, I've done jobs with less. Somehow nice and simple never makes it onto the menu in my world. I've been cooped up in here for weeks. Turns out the runaway daughter I came here to find wasn't kidnapped. She's Skinny Malone's new flame. And she's got a mean streak. Anyway, you got troubles, and I'm glad to help. But now ain't the time. Let's blow this joint. 
Then we'll talk. What was he? And could he be trusted? Those were my two thoughts at the time. Now those thoughts just seem there silly. We go. I found another one of those bobbleheads. This one with one hell of an inspirational quote carved into it. This Valentine was not the man I was expecting. Mama Murphy, you got it right again. But if he could help me find Sean, then I was willing to help this thing. He seemed to know his way around here, and me and Piper were more than happy to follow him to the exit. There they are. How do you want to play this? His only job is to check on the prisoners. I still had some grenades, and with a group of them coming, this seemed the correct time to use them. Quick razzing that detective and get down here! Three grenades left them all in pieces, and all we had to do was clean up the mess. There's a whole... what was that? They were no more than broken men just lying on the floor waiting to be finished off. It was soon over, and the three of us moved closer towards our exit, but we were not there yet. Hard and loud, huh? Well, gets the job done. Best for whoever cleans up the floors. Hey! I don't know who was more surprised, but I do know who reacted first. My new 44 snub nose was cutting through them with ease. Though we were still not alone, but we soon would be. Piper was hurt, but it was not bad. But every time she got hurt, I felt sick inside, like a little piece of me was dying. I injected a stim pack and pulled her to her feet, and the two of us headed on towards Nick. Nick was also more than capable of getting himself into trouble. I put his attacker down, and we headed onwards towards the exit. More stairs? Who built this damn vault? A fitness instructor? Come on out! I promise. Coward! No, you didn't have it in you! As we headed up, we could once again hear voices from above. Nick went on ahead as I readied my last grenade. There was a couple of men at the end of the corridor. Oh, Nick so moved awesome. towards them, and then the fun started once again. Once the last of them fell, Nick told us we were one door from the vault exit. This would be where Slim was waiting for us, like a final showdown in one of those old films I used to watch. This final scene would not disappoint. What are you doing? You come into my house, shoot up my guys? You have any idea how much this is gonna set me back? I wouldn't be here if it weren't for your two-timing game, Skinny. You ought to tell her to write home more often. Oh. Poor little Valentine. Ashamed you got beat up by a girl. I'll just run back home to death, shall I? Should've left it alone, Nikki. This ain't the old neighborhood. In this vault, I'm king of the castle, you hear me? And I ain't letting some private dick shut us down now that I finally got a good thing going. I told you we should've just killed him! But then you had to get all sentimental. All that stupid crap about the old time. Dala, I'm handling this. Skinny Malone's always got things under control. Oh, yeah? Then what's this guy doing here, huh? Valentine must have brought him here to rub us all out. The old times? Wait, what did Mama Skip. Murphy say? Remember, Remember the quarry. quarry and Lily June on the rocks. rocks. Ring any bells? How the hell did you know about that? Okay, you two can go. You got until the count of ten. Then I don't care what happened back in the old days. You're dead. What are you doing, Skinny? Kill him! No, though. They get one chance to leave. Skinny Malone's putting his foot down. My mother was right. You monsters are all just talk. Better get out of here fast. One. 
I could not believe it actually worked. I did not know at the time what it meant and it would be years before Nick would finally tell me. But for the moment, all I could do was think about thanking Mama Murphy when I next saw her. Ah, look at that Commonwealth sky. Never thought anything so naturally ominous could end up looking so inviting. The sky was grey. It out. was always grey these days. You know where to find me anyway. Not many people knew where I went. Your secretary, Ellie. She sent me. She did? I should give her a raise. Now, you mentioned something about a missing person. No trace of where they've gone. I want you to come to my office in Diamond City. Give me all the details. Besides, I think you've earned a chance to sit down and clear your head. I'll meet you there. See you in Diamond City. As Nick walked on ahead, Piper had something important she wanted to tell me, and it was the least I could Piper. do to hear her You're out. Good behavior, aren't you? Didn't realize I had been. So this is you not even trying, huh? I appreciate it. Too few folks can be bothered. Of course, in my experience, if you want to do real good, playing nice only gets you so far. I mean, look at Diamond City. A place I've been trying to warn of real danger. But every issue I publish, all I hear is, Oh, Piper, why don't you ever publish anything happy? Piper, why can't you write something nice for a change? It's enough to make me want to hang up my hat some days. Sounds like it must be exhausting. <laughs> no kidding. But people, they deserve to know the truth. Sure, it can be scary, knowing what's really out there. <laughs> the night doesn't go by, I'm not afraid. Some institute drone will decide today's the day to pay old Piper and family a visit. But it's worth it, because I know the truth. That's what protects us. You'd really risk your family like that? I'm not saying it's without its consequences. But in my experience, it's worth it. I've seen firsthand what the truth can do. My sister and I, we grew up way out in the Commonwealth. Tiny little settlement. Our dad, he was part of the local militia. <laughs> Keeping the raiders off our backs and the Mirelurks out of our latrines, as he'd describe it. Well, uh, one day, our dad turns up dead. His captain, asshole named Mayburn, claims raiders must have gotten him on watch. Well, I didn't buy it. I start making inquiries. Turns out, the captain, he'd sold out. Thought he wasn't getting paid enough to babysit the town. He was gonna leave the gates open one night, let a group of raiders sack the place and take a cut of the profits. My dad found out and was gonna turn Mayburn in, but Mayburn got to him first. And I wasn't about to let that bastard get away with murder. I tried talking to the mayor, but he wouldn't listen. So, I papered the entire town in posters. Wanted for gross dereliction of duty, Captain Mayburn. The mayor sure wanted to talk after that. <laughs> the town threw Mayburn out on his ass and were dug in when a very surprised group of raiders finally showed up. Piper. You saved those people. No. Those people saved themselves. Because they knew the truth. But hey, I... I'm sorry if I've been rambling. I just get... fired up sometimes. It's just nice to talk to someone who... who actually seems to get it. You know? So... should we head out? Such passion from someone with such a troubled childhood. Losing all but her sister so young. She did not have many friends. But I'd hope she was starting to count me as one of them. The bright heart that once again leads me to the man or the person that will help me. I hope this was all worth Are you it. Here? Nick? Oh God, it's really you. <laughs> well, it's hard to mistake this mug for anyone else. <laughs> you keep laughing at death. Someday death's gonna laugh back. Not as long as I got a few friends. Back me up. You saved Nick, this agency, and my job. Thank you. Hey, happy to do it. Yeah? Go diving into scary pre-war ruins all the time then, do you? Here, I know an amount wasn't on the table when you went out to find him, but you deserve a reward. I did not do this for money, but she would not no. take no as an answer, and we had business to get on with. Pat. Nick sure could use a new partner. Whoa, one case at a time, Ellie. Our new friend needs our help first. All right, let's get down to business. Take a seat. Make yourself comfortable. When 
you're trying to find someone who's gone missing, the devil is in the details. Tell me everything you can, no matter how painful it might be. We were in a vault when it happened. Vault 111. It, it was some kind of cryo facility. You were on ice, huh? More importantly, you were underground, sealed up. It's a lot of obstacles to get through just to take one person. What else can you tell me? We're looking for my son, Sean. He's less than a year old. Why would anyone take him? Good question. Why your family in particular? Why an infant? Someone would be taking on all of his care, and a baby needs a lot of it. Anything else you remember? There was a man and a woman. They didn't say much. But I remember they called me the backup. So we're talking a small team. Professionals. The kind that know to keep their lips tight when they're on the job. Not sure what the backup means, though. Well, that confirms it. This isn't a random kidnapping. Whoever took your kid had an agenda. Hmm. There's a lot of groups in the Commonwealth that take people. Raiders, super mutants, the Gunners. And, of course, there's the Institute. Wait. Super mutants? What are they? Big, green, muscles on muscles. In other words, hard to miss. I think we can safely rule them out. Who were the gunners? High-end mercenaries. No job too brutal. They're in the running as likely suspects. They wouldn't be the ones pulling the strings. You think raiders might have done this? <laughs> I honestly doubt it. They can barely organize themselves, let alone pull off something this complicated. So you think this institute is responsible? Well, they're the boogeymen of the Commonwealth. Something goes wrong, everyone blames them. Easy to see why. Those early model synths of theirs strip whole towns for parts, killing everything in their way. Then you got the newer models, good as human, that infiltrate cities and pull strings from the shadows. Worst of all, no one knows why they do it, what their plan is, or where they are. Not even me. And I'm a synth myself. Discarded prototype, anyway. You're a prototype? As far as I know. Never seen any other synth like myself. There's the older ones that are dumb as rocks and all metal. And there's the newer ones that are almost human. I'm somewhere in between. You don't know anything about them? Really? Some kind of security setting strips or blocks out those memories. And it's not just me. Any synth that gets trashed, left behind, or escapes the Institute has the same problem. Probably some kind of failsafe. Either way, I need to find Sean. You're right. The speculation is getting us off track. Let's focus on what you saw. What did these kidnappers look like? I knew what he looked like. I saw him whenever I closed my eyes. Bald head. Scar across his left eye. Wait. It couldn't be. You didn't hear the name Kellogg at all, did you? No. They never said their names. Mm. It's way too big of a coincidence. Ellie, what notes do we have about the Kellogg case? The description matches. Bald head, scar, reputation for dangerous mercenary work, but no one knows who his employer is. And he bought a house here in town, right? And he had a kid with him, didn't he? Yeah, that's right. The house in the abandoned West Stands. The boy with him was around 10 years old. It's Sean. It has to be. Somehow. Don't jump the gun on me. You said you were looking for an infant, remember? That's over nine years difference by my count. Look, maybe he has a son of his own. Maybe it's someone else's kid. Either way, they both vanished a while back. Let's you and I take a walk over to Kellogg's last known address. See if we can snoop out where he went. Security doesn't really go to that part of town, but... You two should still be careful. I always am. Thank you for watching my tale of life after the fallout and our fight for survival in this new world of horror. Please like if you did and subscribe to never miss a video. Please comment below or on Facebook or Twitter with all the links in the description. I'm Sean Insane in the Game and this was Fallout 4 and I hope to see you all one day in the safe zone.